that we have would be the introduction to entrepreneurship. Of course, in this introduction, we have definition of entrepreneurship, the definition of entrepreneurs, um, the different characteristics that makes up an entrepreneur. What is entrepreneurship? For most people, the definition that they give for entrepreneurship is simple as pagtatayo ng negosyo. For us, for us professionals, or ito yung mga ginagawa talaga namin, we define this as a process. It is a process of nurturing a business, figuring out what kind of business that you want, organizing all the resources that are involved in that particular business, and then making it sustainable. How do we make it sustainable? Kailangan, pag gumawa ka ng isang negosyo, you don't just think about the profits. You don't just think about the money, magkano uh, kakailanganin mo, magkano ang kapital mo, um, paano mo siya magbawi, hindi lang dapat yun yung iniisip natin, okay? When you are trying to figure out what kind of business that you want, you also need to figure out para kanina to. That's the definition of a true entrepreneur. Right? That's how an entrepreneur thinks. They don't just create something na valuable. They create it for something else para ma-improve yung buhay na ibang tao, to improve the life of others, improve their lives, improve the lifestyle of others, or improve a certain process. Yung simple pag improve ng isang existing na bagay, that is entrepreneurial already. How would we define what is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is the person behind that particular uh, process. So kung dun sa buong proseso, kumagawa ka, nag-nurture ka ng isang idea, nandiyan sila Henry C., sila Tony Tan Kakyo, these are entrepreneurs, right? But you can also define yourself as an entrepreneur. How? When you create something of value, when you create something that change others' um, perspective into things. They make life easier for them. They try to create a certain way. Nasa tingin natin parang, ah, tamad naman niya. Pero sa totoo, nag... Um, iisip lang siya ng paraan na kung saan mas mapapadali para sa kanya yung trabaho. That's entrepreneurial. The next one would be, what are the types of entrepreneurs? So what we have is two things or two definitions or two um, very different characteristics or types of entrepreneurs. So we have the mega entrepreneur and the micro entrepreneur. So what's the definition or what's the difference between the two? When you call the person um, a mega entrepreneur, we would think these are the traditional entrepreneurs that we see. So, yun nga. As I mentioned a while ago, nandiyan sila Tony Tan, Kakyong, nandiyan sila um, Lucio Tan, nandiyan sila Henry C, nandiyan yung mga big players, nandiyan, okay? Sila yung mga mega entrepreneur. They create big value added. Talagang impactful yung nagagawa nilang isang bagay. When we identify a person as a micro-entrepreneur. A micro-entrepreneur, however, are people that wants an alternative um, to the kind of formal um, profession that they have. Sila yung mga nagsistart pa lang, wala masyadong alam dun sa pinasok nila, but they are willing to know or um, they want to have a certain knowledge about it. Sila yung mga nandiyan. Now, when we look at different characteristics, ano ngayon yung mga makikita natin dito. Level of education. When you look at the level of education of a certain entrepreneur, a micro-entrepreneur has some formal type of education. Sila yung nakapag-college, yung talagang pinag-aralan nila kung paano gumawa ng isang bagay. Let's say, um, I want to be in the fashion business. That's why I am a fashion designer. That's why I want to know more about fashion. Or, gusto mong maging um, managerial in the management of the whole company. So, nag-aral ka ng business management, nag-aral ka kung paano yung finances ng isang kumpanya. They have some formal education about things na kapasukan nila. Now, the difference of a micro-entrepreneur is, for micro-entrepreneurs, it serves as um, an alternative to formal employment. So, uh, as I said a while ago, sila yung mga tao, hindi naman yun yung pinag-aralan nila. Okay, wala silang sobrang alam na knowledge about it. 
interesado lang sila. When you have that type of interest, you can define yourself as an entrepreneur. Ang kailangan mo lang naman, interesado ka dun. Passion nga eh, yung pinaka-ugat ng bawat isang idea. For employment status naman, a mega entrepreneur has, uh, these are formal employees. They are formal employees, mga daling nagtatrabaho sa isang kumpanya. Let's say, for example, isa akong marketer. Let's say, natapos ako ng marketing. Okay? Ngayon, nasa isang firm ako, nasa isang agency, nasa isang ahensya ako, kung saan marketing and advertising yung ginagawa nila. Oh, meron na. Meron na akong knowledge. May alam na ako. May background na ako. How things work within the industry. That's why I want to try it for myself. Okay? Having said that, Kapag nag-shift ako from um, working from that particular environment and adapting the best practices inside that environment, tapos ako naman yung nagtayo na sa kong agency, sa kong ahensya, marketing, advertising firm, ibig sabihin lang doon, I am transitioning into becoming a mega entrepreneur. The difference of um, a mega to a micro, a micro entrepreneur, on the other hand, serves as their option to make a living. Gawa nilang income generating yung mga enterprises na ginagawa nila. So, for others, for others kasi parang part-time lang. Yun yung ginagawa ko, kaya gusto ko um, karirin lang yun. For micro-enterprises, it's different in a way na kailangan makakapag-generate kagad siya ng income. Kasi ang goal na ng mga micro uh, micro-entrepreneurs ay alternative siya sa kung ano man yung status na meron na. So, kung ganun yung definition na ibibigay mo sa akin na um, ipapakita natin, we can define that person as a micro-entrepreneur. Or meron agad pera na papasok sa kanya para sa family niya, para sa mga expenses niya, lahat ng yan. Now, the next one is entrepreneur's wealth. When we look at the entrepreneur's wealth, dito naman natin titignan kung ano yung present resources. When we look at uh, mega entrepreneurs, they have their own wealth and funds na nagagaling sa pamilya. Funds na galing sa mga savings nila. Funds na meron sila mismo. So, yun yung ginagamit nila parang kapag start sila. If I want to have my own clothing line, I will have the savings na gagamitin ko yung pera ko or hihingi ako sa mga magulang ko or it's a family business. Those are mega entrepreneurs. For micro, yung maliliit na negosyo, yung mga micro-entrepreneurs, wala yung masyadong resources, wala sila masyadong financial aid. Uh, for different SMEs or for different micro-enterprises, there are a lot of projects na ginagawa ngayon ng government natin. Like, um, meron sila mga tax exemptions, parang BMD law, we call it the BMD law, kung saan um, exempted sila sa, is- sa iba't ibang mga um, kailangan bayaran. Like, for example, SSS from EDIB, hindi sila required na magbenta na ay na magbigay ng mga ganung bagay or benefits sa mga empleyado nila kasi nga maliit lang yung income na nakukuha sa kanila hindi rin ganun kalaki yung tax na binabayaran nila compared sa iba or sa malalaking mga enterprises na um the philippines mismo philippines per se is uh, composed of um 80 to 90% of SMEs so sila yung mga small to medium enterprises yan yung talaga maliliit na mga negosyo lang. Yung mga small enterprises, micro and small enterprises in the Philippines, dun sa 90% na sinabi ko, 90% dun ay micro business. So just imagine kung gano'ng karami, and during this pandemic, nakita naman natin kung gano'ng karami yung mga tao na gusto talagang kumita ng pera and kailangan kumita ng pera because... <laughs> Na, eh. Wala nang trabaho yung Pilipinas. So, kailangan natin gumawa ng trabaho para sa sarili natin. So, next one are the risk. Okay? Risk appetite. Yun yung pang fourth. Now, when you're talking about risk appetite, of course, may difference kapag may pera ka at wala kang pera. Nandiyan yung malaki rin yung difference if you have enough resources and you don't have enough resources. Nandiyan din yung um, may alam ka dun sa ginagawa mo at wala kang masyadong alam dun sa ginagawa mo. Having said that, um, for people, for mega entrepreneurs, since they have the background, since they have the knowledge, mas malaki yung potential na mag-go big or home sila. Bakit? Kasi alam na nila kung ano yung pinapasok nila. And they have the money to sustain that. Pwedeng, um, sige, maglalabas ako ng 10,000, 
50,000, 100,000 because I have the financials. Uh, I have the finances para doon. Mayroon akong pera na ipukundan para doon sa idea na naniniwala akong mag-work because I've seen it happen. For micro-entrepreneurs, it's a different ballgame. Magkaibang magkaiba yun. Bakit? Kasi yun nga, you don't have enough background. You are trying. Okay? You are trying your best na parang what if this works? What if it doesn't work? Paano ko ngayon iti-take yun? So, let's say paunti-unti yung risk na nilalabas ko. Uh, let's say I started with 1,000. I started with 2,000, 3,000 para lang makapag-start ako ng negosyo. And there, uh, dun ko ngayon makikita kung um, willing ba akong mag-risk or make sacrifice ng mas malaking pera just to compensate or uh, to give this business a chance or not. Of course, we have the entrepreneurial traits and the entrepreneurial invention. So we have the internal and external factors. When we look at the internal factors, these are things that are within you, things na um, sa tingin mo controllable. So kasama dito is um, social ties, yung mga connections mo, yung mga um, kakilala mo, lahat ng yan. What else? The knowledge that you have. Yung mga alam mo dun sa mismo negosyo, those are things that um, part of your internal factors. Another thing is the demographics, the behavior. Paano ka nagre-react sa mga bagay-bagay? How do you cope? The next one is about the entrepreneurial process. Now, for the entrepreneurial process, the first step is discovery. Right? Oh, uh, wait lang. Before anything else, what is an entrepreneurial process? An entrepreneurial process is what we call an entrepreneurial discipline. It is the step-by-step -step na ginagawa natin para ma-welcome and acknowledge yung isang idea. So, um, similar with um, experimentation, may step-by-step -step process tayo na ginagawa para naman mas maging ang um, maganda yung flow at maayos lahat ng mga uh, ways mo kung paano ka paano mo ngayon aayusin yung isang negosyo. The first one is discovery. Okay. Discovery is about welcoming the idea. So serendipity mo ka, and then at some point, you acknowledge or yung parang may napansin ka na parang bakit hindi nilang lagyan ng ganito yung isang bagay para mas mapadali yung process niya. Bakit iba yung kulay niya? Bakit hindi na lang siya tumataas baba? Bakit hindi na lang siya color blue? Bakit hindi na lang ilawan? Lagyan ng wheels? Bakit hindi natin gawin automated? Okay? These are questions or these are our what way. Dito sa discovery natin, um, tinitingnan kung paano kaya natin i-welcome itong mga ideas na to. Yan yung nasa first part. Recognition of a business idea. You already know, what if may wheel siya? What if automated natin gawin? Dito ka ngayon nag-experiment in the development stage. You try to um, inject the things na sa tingin mo mag-work dun sa proseso na naisip mo. Kasi, as I said, hindi naman um, ang entrepreneurship, hindi lang yan pang, pang steam jobs level na parang kailangan legendary ka kagal. No, okay? Once you improve an idea, once you create value out of an existing process or an existing business, that is already entrepreneurial. Yung may binago ka, may tinweek ka, tapos in-improve mo, mas napadali yung buhay ng isang tao. Next process would be organizing your resources. Since you already know what are the things that can work dun sa mismo idea mo, let's say, ginawa mong automated lahat ng mga um, technology based yung magiging business mo. So, gagawa ka ng app, sino ngayon yung mga kailangan mo? Do you need an IT expert? Do you need engineers? Do you need um, some other people, web developers, ano yung mga kailangan mo resources? You talk about the materials that are involved, you talk about your inputs, you talk about um, the manpower, the money involved. Those are part of your resources. Paano mo ngayon sila kukuhanin? From the suppliers to you, what will be the process? Sila ba ay mag-deliver sa bahay mo? Kayo ba ay mag- uh, magkakaroon ng video conferencing every once in a while para mapag-usapan at ma-improve yung mismong data testing mo, yung mismong ginagawa mo, or you do a completely different uh, scheme dyan sa gagawin mo. So, it's up to you as a business. Pero, kailangan, again, bago ka makarating dun sa pag-gather um, ng no, resources mo, alam mo muna dun sa mismong idea, dun sa what-if mo, ano ngayon yung mangyayari, kaya mo ba siyang gawin? 
and then magre resources ka. Next step is about um, implementation. Okay. Dun sa implementation, it's about business planning. It's about talking about your four functions of business. Right? Four functions. That includes the marketing. That includes operations. That includes HR. And of course, finances. Who would be your marketing head? Sino mag uh, papakilala sa sa tao? What would be the look? What would be the branding? How will people define you? What do you want people uh, to see? Diyan sa magiging brand mo. Ikaw ba ay isang high-end product? Affordable product? What kind of product are you? Saan mo ngayon ipoposition yung uh, produkto mo in the minds of your customers? That's part of your marketing. When you talk about your operations, tuwing kailan yung lead time mo or gaano katagal ka ngayon makakapag-deliver. Let's say you are um, a bread business, tuwing kailan ka nag-bake, tuwing kailan ka mag-deliver, tuwing kailan ka mamimili. How do you source uh, uh, your inventory? How do you manage your inventory? When you talk about people, you're not just talking about empleyado. Okay? Pati yung mag-head dun sa mga departments mo na yun, pag-uusapan nyo yan. Um, also, the people that are um, going to be uh, behind everything else, like suppliers, lahat ng mga uh, pagdadaanan ng negosyo mo, lahat ng negotiations involved, lahat yun, HR did yan. Lastly, of course, finances, pera, allocations. Magkano i-allocate mo dun sa product development? Magkano i-allocate mo for your marketing plan? Magkano i-allocate mo for your ads? Magkano i-allocate mo for your um, testing, uh, research and development, for your R&D, for your um, people, for the salaries? All of this should be answered in this part. The reason why you're doing business plan in the first place is to answer those questions. Para kapag nag implement ka, wala ka ng tanong sa buhay mo. Wala ka na um, magiging problema. You already know what's going to happen. Um, when you talk about your operations, pati mga future problems pag-uusapan mo. Pati mga possible bottlenecks, lahat may plan A to Z. Lahat kompleto ka. Uh, what you want to do is to limit any kind of problems and risks that are involved. That's why you are doing this is plan in the first place. And of course, lastly, return. Nenegosyo ka for a reason. Always remember that. One could be, um, gusto mo na mas mabuting buhay. Gusto mo na madaming pera. That's not bad. That's not bad for uh, returns. Um, sustainability is about the things. When you talk about people, who are the people or sino yung may impact ka sa kanila? Nakatulong ka ba sa ibang tao? Do you live livelihood because of the business that you're doing? Um, what type of business um, yung ginagawa mo and paano sila maapektahan. The next one is about the planet. Negosyo mo ba? Is it sustainable in a way that um, you use a whole new different um, material para sa packaging mo? Lumabas yung iba't ibang packaging kung saan um, mga renewable na mga products yung ginagamit nila for their different packaging. And that's entrepreneurial already. When you talk about profit, saano yung magiging hatian nyo? Magkano yung gugustuhin mo for the future? Gusto mo, do you want to make millions? Do you want to make billions? Do you want to make thousands of pesos um, in the future? Why are you doing this one? Okay lang naman na may iba't iba kang kasod. Or kung gusto mo yung tatlong yun, tamaan mo. That's very nice. That's very good. Good job ka doon. But again, hindi mo pwedeng ipilit yung isang bagay. Hindi talaga yun yung purpose mo. Entrepreneurial decision making. So when we talk about the decision making, we talk about the critical thinking, we talk about the creative thinking, and we talk about the strategic thinking. Okay. Lahat lang yan, magkakaiba yan. Or um, somehow same but different. Critical thinking is about systematic and rational way of providing an answer to a question. Meaning, what's the rationale? Isang research na yatanong ka. Problem rationale. Bakit? Ano? Para saan? What's the purpose? Um, what's the meaning of your study? Bakit mong ginagawa yung ginagawa mo? What's the meaning behind all of the hard work? Bakit? So, you need to answer that. That is um, one of the major questions in the beginning. Uh, I know that in your interviews, isa yung mga itatanong yun, na parang, um, why did you create this business in the first place? Dahil ba yun yung resources na meron ka? Dahil ba galing dun yung family business ninyo? Because you have this prior knowledge na gusto mong uh, magamit in the future? Who knows? Okay? Next one. The next one is about creativity. 
Okay? Not creative thinking. When you talk about creative thinking, this is the thought process that brings about the discovery of new ideas. If an idea is so wild, magta-try ka eh. Magta-try na magta-try ka. Gagawin mo talaga siya. Kaya ngayon talagang mga successful when it comes to entrepreneurship, when it comes to business in general, sila yung mga hindi naman welcome in the beginning yung mga ideas nila. Like for example, when um, a smartphone was first introduced to us, we didn't know and we didn't welcome that idea. Bakit? Walang gumagawa nun. Nokia was the big player before. Pero may keyboard pa and, and all. Walang mga kapagsabi na parang, ah, kaya ko palang mag-search ng mga bagay-bagay. I can have different apps that can help improve my life uh, through the use of a smartphone. Nobody imagined that before because it's a wild idea. Because of that wild idea, that creative thinking, nakabuo tayo ngayon ng iba't ibang mga cellphone. Halos magkakamukha na. Pakamukha na yung mga specs, yung mga um, itsura rin nila, halos same-same na. It's so hard to be different nowadays. Like, you need to have very wild ideas in, uh, in terms of creating new things. Hindi pwedeng magsistick ka lang sa kung ano yung traditional way of doing things. Even this, online classes, there is a traditional way of having classes. Like face-to-face, -face, nung makakausap ko kayo and tatawagin ko kayo or whatsoever. But we need to sketch that out because we have a pandemic. Having said that, we need to create new things. So let's say we create podcasts, we create um, videos para sa inyo, we create different things or we collaborate as teachers para mas matulungan kayo to get uh, the whole picture of what we want in the next ones. Next one is about the strategic thinking. Of course, sa isang grupo, meron yung critical, meron yung creative, at meron yung strategic mag-isip. Ito naman ngayon yung mga strategies na ilalagay ninyo to help you uh, back up your data. Okay. For example, tinanong ka, what's your target market? How did you define your target market? What were the tools that you used? For example, you you use a market trend analysis, you tried the Porter's analysis, you tried all the analysis involved in the business para lang ma-define mo ng maayos kung sino ba yung target market mo. To give them the right product that's suitable for them kung ano-ano rin strategies yung ina-apply mo. Okay? Those are strategic thinking behind all of the processes involved. Is that clear? We say competitive advantage, this is the edge. Okay, ito yung unique selling proposition. Ito yung kakaiba sa'yo. Ito yung reason kung bakit ka bibili ng mga tao in the first place. First one is what we call the customer focus. When we say customer focus, you focus, of course, with customers. Your goal is to satisfy them on how whatever they want when it comes to their preferences, when it comes to their needs. So, we're talking about um, ano ba yung hinahanap nila when it comes to taste, when it comes to color, when it comes to texture. Lahat yun tatanungin mo kapag nag-market analysis ka. When you're trying to define the kind of market that you want for your customers or for your business, this is when you try to realize na ito yung gusto mo makita dun sa mga tao mo. Next competitive advantage of an entrepreneur would be the integrity and responsibility. Integrity and responsibility is more on reputation. So, nag -re ka ngayon sa good or bad reputation sa rep ng isang negosyo. So, for, the, for this one, importante sa'yo that you have a very clean and defined reputation. Paano ka ba nakikilala ng mga customers mo? Are you defined as um, parang fake news ba yung nakukuha nila every time they hear you or hindi? Um, do they see you as a legitimate brand or hindi? Right? These, uh, this is more on um, yun nga, reputation ng mismo negosyo. Same goes with um, ambassadors, actresses, sponsors na kinukuha natin. For example, influencers. Sa mga influencers, meron tayong mga ina-idolize. Meron tayong mga um, nilolook up na mga artista, for example. Um, may be local or international na mga uh, artista. So, meron silang iba't ibang reputasyon para sa atin. Because of their contents, because of how they are defined by their audiences, meron na ngayong picture na napipaint doon sa mga um, nanonood. About the integrity and the responsibility of that person, paano niya kinikeli yung sarili niya? Okay. Another thing, all those people in position um, may it be in the government. Okay. And may it be in the uh, 
administration or maybe yun sa mga student council na meron tayo, kung ano yung reputasyon na meron sila. Yun yung nagiging rason natin kung bakit binoboto or hindi natin sila binoboto. Kahit pa sabihin mo, isang libong magandang bagay yung ginawa niya. Because of the thing that defined them, parang, let's say, um, okay, kurakot talaga siya. Para sa akin, kurakot talaga siya. Kahit pa anong maganda na ginawa niya, hindi mo yung isipin. Have this, um, it's a bad thing, of course, na you, you may cancel culture, but um, in Twitter, for example, maraming ganyan. Marami tayong kinakancel ng mga brands because of the people behind those brands. They get what I mean. That's why it's important that if that would be the focus of your business, kailangan alagaan mo talaga kung sino yung mag-represent uh, sa'yo, kung sino ngayon yung uh, magiging muka ng mismong brand mo. Because again, you're relying on the reputation. The next one is about the niche market. When you're talking about the niche market, it is targeting a specific group of people. Kung ang um, target market ay targeting a specific group of people already, niche market is much smaller. Mas specified pa siya. Bakit? Niche market is more on creating specialized products for a different or for a specific need in one. When we say specific, for example, you are um, a shoe brand. Let's say that you wanted to target sport. Sports attire. Yan yung mga gusto mo. So you, you started with shoes. Now, when you were creating a product for shoes, for sports, can a basketball player wear the same shoes that a football player have? Yes or no? Pwede. Why? They have a specific thing na kailangan nila dun sa mismo produkto. If you try to give um, a basketball player ng isang football shoes, madadapa at madadapa yan. Hindi yan kakape sa court na ginagalawa nila. Sa field, for example, kapag binigyan mo ng basketball shoes yan, eh kung ko na lang kung hindi yan madalas. Because again, you are creating a product that is designed specifically for their needs and wants. Kahit na sabihin mo gusto mo na, uh, I am a shoe brand. So, are you um, a casual shoe, training shoes, uh, basketball shoes, football shoes, running shoes? What kind of shoes are you? So, ano ngayon yung magiging niche market mo? Sila yung may very specific na ginagawa. Ang dami ng available sa market. So, you cannot just define yourself into one category na marami pang subcategory. So, you need to define ano ka ba talaga when it comes to the niche market. When your competitive advantage is about innovation, ito yung malas team jumps yung thinking mo. You want to be legendary. You want to be remembered. You want something so great and you want something that is new and totally different from the rest. Hindi ka nandyan para lang um, i-improve yung isang bagay. You don't just want to tweak things. You want to create things. So if that would be the focus of your business, um, there's no problem with that. Although there are, yun nga, risk involved dyan sa pagkanegosyo mo. Why? Um, a lot of innovators, yung mga inventors, mga innovators, yung mga legendary people, they did not make it there because they were everyone else. They made it there because they were so different and so drastic yung mga ginawa talaga nila mga changes. Imagine your life without phones in general. Imagine your life without any some kind of tech around you. Kaya nyo ba yun? If that would be the competitive advantage of your business, you need to define and you need to be ready. Okay? Kailangan handang-handa ka dyan sa gagawin mo at sure na sure ka na um, at naniniwala ka dyan sa mismo idea mo. Kasi again, first things first, wala talaga maniniwala sa iyo. They would say that it's a lousy idea, it's a very wild idea, hindi yan ka panipaniwala, hindi yan nangyayari, lahat ng worst, maririnig mo yan. Kasi you're creating something different and something new. The last one would be quality performance. When you talk about quality performance as your competitive advantage, you don't deal with anything below standard. Ito yung standard, pag nandito yung pinroduce mong bagay, it's reject. Competitive advantage. For example, ito yung standard mo, di ba? Sa mga pantalon, dapat specific yung tahi, ganito karami yung uh, buttons niyan, tapos ganito lang yung haba yung length, yung suka. Kapag hindi ganyan yung uh, nakita na end product, reject yan. It's part of the overruns. Kaya maraming mga overruns na halos hindi nyo makikita 
kung ano yung mali sa kanila. But um, only businesses na ito yung mismo pinakawakan nila. Let's say, mali yung tela, mali yung tahe, mali yung stitching, mali yung botones. Uh, even as little as that, um, or hindi nagpantay yung pattern, okay? Yung mga maliit na bagay na yan, hindi yan nakakapasa dun sa mga negosyo na yun talaga yung pinaka ginagawa nila. That's why you need to have some kind of quality control and quality assurance in the overall operation in assembly line. Because again, that is your advantage. So, uh, just a brief recap. When you talk about competitive advantage, you talk about customer focus. You talk about niche market. You talk about integrity and responsibility. You talk about innovation. And you talk about quality performance. Lahat ng yan, parte or pwede maging competitive advantage ng inyong negosyo. Kung kanina pinag-usapan natin yung mga competitive advantage, now we're going to talk about the field of expertise of entrepreneurs. The first one being social enterprises or social entrepreneurship. When you talk about social enterprises and social entrepreneurs, you talk about social problems. How do you find solution to those social problems? And ba yung definition natin ng mga social problems? Let's say poverty, livelihood, kawalan ng trabaho. 45% of Filipinos lost their job during the pandemic. How can you give a solution to that one? Paano mo ngayon sila tutulungan? That is a social enterprise. For example, we wanted to have tote bags. It's an easy product to do. It's something that is um, very available in the market. Madali siyang gawin, hindi mahirap gawin. How can you give livelihood to these people? Let's say, lahat ng mga tao na nawalan ng trabaho during the pandemic, sila yung ginawa mo workers, sila yung ginawa mo kanyapake, sila yung ginawa mo delivery boy, dyan sa mga produkto mo. That is social enterprise. That is giving livelihood, giving them a chance to have a better life. The only difference is that when you are a social enterprise and you're doing social entrepreneurship, hindi mo focus ang pera. Ang focus mo ay, it's either, uh, either one of the three things, except profit. So, your focus may be planet or people. Nandun ka ngayon mas nag-focus. So, ang focus ko ba ay, um, everything that I use are organic. That's planet. Lahat ng mga proceeds or yung profits na nakukuha ko can help yung mga cancer patients. That's a social enterprise. So, kami tayong nakikita ngayon ng mga nagsusulutan ng mga social enterprises. Even this pandemic. Kasi, uh, yun nga, it's a very sad news. It's a very sad news na 45% of Filipinos lost their job. That's a lot. Okay? Nasa recession tayo. Nandito na tayo sa make or break ng mga career ng mga tao. Yung mga um, fresh grads, yung mga um, young professionals like us, talagang kapit, kapit na kapit na kami when it comes to our jobs and our livelihoods because we wouldn't know or hindi namin, mal- hindi namin alam kung hanggang kailan kami trabaho, hanggang kailan ka may negosyo na gagawin. So, these are things or these are thoughts that plays in our heads okay, right now. But again, given that you are entrepreneurs or you will be future entrepreneurs, you can give um, some kind of change using social enterprises. Kailangan lang makita natin kung ano talaga yung path or ano yung social problem na sa tingin nyo importante at kailangan natin bigyan ng halaga and bigyan ng emphasis. So, right now, we have a lot of problems. We have um, jeepney drivers na naman malimos na. We have, um, yan nga, yung mga angkas na halos konti na lang yung pinagdadeliveran nila, konti na lang yung may trabaho, ang dami na wala ng trabaho. So, in your project, in your PETA, I think that this could be the best path para sa inyo. This could be this amazing path para sa inyo. Kasi I know that you have a lot of resources to help them. Or alamin natin kung paano natin sila matutulungan. Okay? The next one would be technopreneurs pala mo. Technopreneurs are, of course, enterprises or businesses that focus more on technology. Sila yung mas nag-focus dyan sa mga innovation, creating new products, and yun nga, ang pinaka-core ng mismo negosyo nila, it can be uh, anything within technology. It can be IT development, it can be web designing, it can be um, anything under the sun as long as it involves technology. That's their core. The next one are intra and extrapreneur. So what's the difference between the two? When you say you're an intrapreneur, 
ibig sabihin yun, you're inside. You're within a company, you're an employee, and you are trying to help that particular um, business na yung mismong pinagtatrabaho, tulungan mo sila in what way. You're giving them ideas. Ikaw yung, you're, you're the one who has tasked the thing to establish the idea. Ikaw yung nasa product designing. Ikaw yung nasa R&D. Ikaw yung, uh, what's the next big thing for our company? Ikaw yung nagde-define nun. Ikaw yung tumutulong doon. So that's being an entrepreneur. The only difference of an intra and extrapreneur, an extrapreneur is a person who jumps from one company to another. Kung yung kanina, yung isang entrepreneur, may some kind of loyalty. An entrepreneur is different. Kapag naiwanan niya na, na okay na, stable na, nakapag-share na ako ng idea dyan, I have to move on for my growth para naman ibang business naman yung matuwa ko. That's being an extrapreneur. So, that's the only difference between the two. The next lesson is about the difference of um, employment and entrepreneurship. Let me just clear this out. Okay? We're not here to preach and say na mas better ko ng business kayo. Because it's not, right? Entrepreneurship is not for everyone. It's it's a very stressful environment to be in. If you cannot handle that type of stress, then don't. Hindi yan para sa lahat. Kailangan, una pa lang gusto mo na siyang gawin. You have that interest already. If you don't have it, then don't push. Kasi ang hirap ipilat ng sa pagay na hindi mo pa nakakaya. If you want to be professional, then why not? I'm not saying that it's bad or it's good. Um, what I'm saying is, you have your options to do it. During our time, nung kami, ay, nung ako ay nagpa-college, may masyado kaming bata para ng college. Why? We're not sure kung anong gusto namin kung graduated ng ano, 20, 20 years old, 19 years old. Parang, am I ready to be an adult? Am I even ready to pay taxes already? Hindi ko alam. Kami lang yung hindi na mojin. And that's a disadvantage for us. Kasi, um, I have this phone interview. Um, it was good. I was speaking in straight English. Good job. But half of what I said, I don't legitimately remember. But one thing's for sure is um, na realize ko na nasa isang interview ako. And na realize ko kung ano yung halaga ko. No, tinanong niya na sa akin was, how much is your expected salary? Hmm, magkano nga ba ang ina-expect kong salary? I live in sa Palok, Manila. I live in the Pitan. Okay? So, sobrang lapit ko lang sa USA. And, um, ayaw kong mag-convert. Okay? Yun, agad yung naisip ko eh. Um, their office is in Ortigas. And that's very long way for me. Okay, sobrang tagal, tagal na commute nun. At ang sakit sa ulo nun kapag rush hour. Kasi it's from 8 to 5. Um, that's the first thing that went into my mind. And since we are trained as employees, I as employers, I know also kung magkana yung binabayad for uh, what's the minimum wage. Pero syempre, feeling ko magaling ako. Feeling ko kaya ko. Feeling ko... Uh, I have this advantage ng kahit konti lang. Okay, that's why I I don't want just a minimum wage. I was sure of it. Um, until now, ayoko pa rin naman na parang minimum wage earner lang tayo. So, um, we try to negotiate. So, um, what I said was, and I was firm with it, it should not be lower than 25,000 pesos. It was not high, but I was sure that it was justifiable. Why? I don't have any background when it comes to corporation. Okay? I have zero experience with that. Um, nada. Wala. Wala talaga. Sa isang korporasyon, hindi ko alam kung ang una ko bang gagawin ay taga-photocopy, taga-timpla ng kape, taga-punas ng kung ano ang bagay. And hindi rin naman tayo kung graduate with flying colors. But I was sure that I, there is something in me that was good. Good enough. Later on, I continued with my business. Kung ano yung naging Isis ko before, siya yung ginawa ko negosyo. Um, enough with the rambling. Right? Enough with the rambling. Um, nandun na kami sa get together with our friends. And that's when I realized that apparently my friends are, most of them, were minimum wage earners. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. But what I realized is that kahit na sobrang talino, kahit na sobrang dalino, 
college ka, kapag wala kang ibang ginawa kundi pag-aral lang na mag-aral, hindi enough yun para sa isang kumpanya. Hindi enough yun. Let's say, kung laude ka. Kung laude ka man na nakagraduate, ilan kayong kung laude sa batch ninyo? Ilan kayong kung laude na graduate sa buong Metro Manila? Okay? Just imagine that. And it will explode. Okay? Your brain will explode. Talagang, hindi mo may insert na parang, ang dami ko palang kakompetensya. Okay? That's why, what I'm saying is, if you want to be professionals, gusto niyo talagang mag-trabaho sa future, you have to make sure that you're different from all of your classmates. Okay? Hindi pwedeng kung ano yung ginawa niya, gagawin mo rin. Kung saan org siya, doon ka rin pupunta. If you want to become the president of the Philippines, you should be doing a lot of things right now to become the next president. Okay. Gusto mong makilala ka when it comes to politics, you should be doing something that uh, will get you there. Hindi pwedeng um, mag-aaral ka lang. No, I'm not saying na yung pag-aaral ay bad. What I'm saying is, there's more to life than just studying. Dito pumapasok ngayon yung mga activities na ginagawa natin. Different orgs, different um, social gatherings na napupuntahan. Lahat yan may natutunan ka in a way. Okay? In a way, may natutunan ka. That's why we need to appreciate those small things. Okay? Maganda na maging professional ka. Let's say, I'm a teacher, but at the same time, I wouldn't define myself as a teacher. I am a business professional first before I became a teacher. Why? Ang hirap ituro ng entry kung wala akong prior experience. Kung wala akong failures, kung wala akong mga failed beginnings, um, bad endings, kung never akong nalugi, kung hindi ko alam ko ano yung feeling na yun, ang hirap para ituro sa inyo itong subject na to. That's why it's important that you get them from experiences. So, if you want to be employees or employers in the future, it's still up to you. Want to earn 10,000 pesos per month at pumunta ng Ortigas? It's up to you. Do you want to work in a bank that only pays 13,000 per month? Sa Makati, it's up to you. Um, do you want to work na, let's say, you're from Kalaokan, tapos um, nagtatrabaho sa BGC in this very beautiful and prestigious company for real estate, but you're only getting paid 16,000 pesos per month? It's up to you. Okay. Pwede nyo silang pagsabayin. Look at us. Kaya kami stress sa buhay. Kasi pinagsasabay-sabay namin sila. Why? I want to stop working. I want to um, retire as early as 30, 35, 40 para at that point, at that age, tapos na akong trabaho. I have enough money already para ma-sustain yung buhay ko. Okay? So those are things or those are part of my big goals. So what would be your small goals? Tingnan nyo muna sa sarili nyo. But, um, based on your priorities. Do you want to help your family? Do you want to help yourself? Do you want self-actualization? Do you want um, growth for you, for your family? Depende yan sa'yo. One of the biggest advantage for um, employees, for employees is that um, you have new benefits. Okay? Meron kayo mga SL, VL, yan, mga sick leave, yung mga uh, vacation leave. You have guaranteed income every month. Alam mo na every paycheck, every 15-30, may pasok sa'yo pera. That's a guarantee kasi, again, you're an employee. Okay? Another advantage is fixed working hours and you have less responsibility. Let's say that part of your job description is ito lang yung gagawin mo. Dapat yun lang yung ginagawa mo. O kung yun lang yung hinihingi nila sa inyo, yun lang dapat yung ginagawa mo for your company. But, if you want to excel, of course, um, do more. Pero yun nga, um, mas less your responsibility mo and um, you have this fixed hours na parang 8 to 5 papasok ka, dun mo i-accomplish lahat. Kasi hindi mo siya dadalit sa bahay. Well, the difference of an entrepreneur, however, is um, there's growth. Okay? There's growth within your career or your job. Every day, I learn. Okay? It's, this is a fact. Every day, I learn. Every day, um, during the pandemic, hindi ko alam na matututo pa rin ako. Um, we have nights na talagang umiiyak na kami sa manan loob, okay? Because of the losses that we incur, because of the failures that we have, and mind you, it's hard, okay? Hindi siya, hindi siya madali kung may isipin. 
and um, i- ibang level of stress. Pero at the same time, um, I have growth. Uh, kung if I look look at my portfolio before, kung iba na rin yung way kung paano ako na market ng mga products, kung paano namin pinapakilala yung mga brands, ibang iba na siya because again, every day is an experience and every day there is growth. Another one is um, independent. Um, I get to say when I want to work and when I don't like to work. There will be days na talagang hindi mo makila yung sarili mo. You can't just, um, you can't pull yourself na parang hindi mo pwede ipilit na para magtrabaha tayo ngayon. No, I just want to lay down and stop. And I can say that because, um, yun nga, even though I don't have sick leave or vacation leave um, as an entrepreneur or as a business owner, I can tell myself that I need a break and I'm gonna stop today. Right? And I deserve it. So, um, pwede ko yung sabihin sa sarili ko. But again, there are consequences behind it. Flexibility in a way na pwede 10 a.m. mag-start, 5 tapos na ako. Oh, mag email muna ako, makikipag-usap sa mga supplier, then the next day, hindi ako magtatrabaho because deserve ko yun, deserve ko ng day. Again, hawak mo yun. There will be advantages and disadvantages when you take the route of being an entrepreneur or being an employee. Having said that, kailangan ready ka sa kung ano man yung mga makukuha mo along the way. Okay? All of, uh, both of these things, pareho, at pareho silang magkakaroon, magkakaroon ng advantage and disadvantage. Ngayon, I-weigh mo na lang dito, ano mas importante sa'yo? Do you want to um, have this type of advantage in your life uh, with these consequences or do you want the other one? Palaging may stress, palaging may trabaho na nandyan na nag-iintay sa inyo, palagi kang, um, palaging may working hours, investment, sacrifices that are involved along the way. But it's up to you. It is always up to you what would you choose kung ano yung um, mas mahalaga when it comes to the priorities that we have. For us, um, the only difference that I always choose entrepreneurship first is because there's control, okay? I want to be able to control my environment. I want to be able to control the kind of work that I do. I want to be able to control the people around me, the people that I work with, the people that um, that surrounds me, and lahat ng yun, okay, nakukuha ko as being an entrepreneur. I get to learn new things every single day. That's why I love being an entrepreneur. But again, there's no harm in being a professional worker or being an employee. Okay? Kaya nga kayo nandito sa mga school, nandito tayo para um, to have a better life. And we all want that. So I hope this sums up all the lesson that we have for our synchronous, for our asynchronous and synchronous classes. And I'll see you guys next time. Or, I don't know. Actually, hindi ko alam paano mag-outro. But, um, I hope this really helps. Not just my students, but for other students as well. I'll just see you next time. This has been Miss Christine Ayat.